Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on rheumatoid arthritis. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the drug treatment of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, anti-rheumatoid drugs, so drugs used to treat uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, right. Uh, so, the structure for this video then is we're going to start off by uh, going over the pathology of rheumatoid arthritis uh, because we can't understand uh, the pharmacology, i.e. how the drugs work, until we understand the actual pathology because the drugs are going to interact with and intervene with uh, the pathology. Okay, so we're going to start by going over the pathology of rheumatoid arthritis. Then what we're going to do, do is talk about uh, drugs that are used to treat uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So we'll start off with uh, the COX inhibitors, so the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. We'll then talk about uh, anti-cytokine drugs. Uh, after that we'll talk about uh, glucocorticoids. And then we'll talk about other immunosuppressants. And finally, we'll talk about the DMARDs, which stands for the Disease Modifying Anti Rheumatic Drugs, okay, which are uh, basically all the drugs that are left over, many of which uh, the mechanism by which they actually help in rheumatoid arthritis is not known. Uh, for instance, you have gold compounds there, you have uh, anti malarial drugs that uh, really the mechanism by which these actually help to uh, reduce uh, the inflammation of the joint is not understood at all, basically. Okay, so, uh, we're discussing rheumatoid arthritis. Now, uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a uh, chronic inflammatory disease of synovial joints. Okay, so we're going to start this video by uh, talking about the structure of a synovial joint. Then we'll discuss the structure of the synovial membrane and we'll then begin to discuss uh, the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis, this chronic inflammatory disease of the joints. Okay, right, so let's see the structure of a synovial joint then. Okay, so a synovial joint is fundamentally a joint, so it's a place where uh, two bones are going to come together, okay? Now, synovial joints are very movable joints in general, okay? So, uh, generally the two bones can move relative to one another. Okay, so here is the first bone, and here is the second bone. Now, because the bones are going to be moving over one another, there is a risk that you might have a lot of friction against them, you know. If you imagine just rubbing two surfaces together, there could be a lot of friction there. So firstly, uh, what we need to talk about is the fact that the uh, terminal ends of the bones uh, are covered by a layer of cartilage, which is mainly hyaline cartilage. Okay, so this is a cartilage layer here. Okay, and therefore it is not the actual surface of the bones that is going to articulate. Okay, instead it is this hyaline cartilage covering of the ends excuse me, of the bones, which is going to articulate with one another. Okay, uh, then uh, the whole thing is surrounded by a joint capsule, okay? So, let me show this. So, the joint capsule consists of two layers, okay? So, I'll draw it here. Right. So, the joint capsule consists of two layers, an inner layer and an outer layer. Okay, so here is the uh, beginning of the inner layer. Okay, and I'll draw the whole joint capsule here. So this is the uh, outer aspect of it, and I'll split it into two layers now. So we have an inner layer, and the inner layer is what's known as the synovial membrane. Okay, and this is primarily where rheumatoid arthritis is going to occur. Rheumatoid arthritis is a uh, chronic inflammatory disease of the synovial membrane. Okay, so this is the synovial membrane here. Now, the synovial membrane has another name. It's also often referred to as the synovium, okay? So, the synovium, when people talk about the synovium, they just mean this inner layer of the joint capsule here that I'm now colouring in in orange, okay? They do not mean, often people confuse the synovium for uh, the cavity within the joint capsule, which is full of synovial fluid, but the synovium 
It's just another name for the synovial membrane. It's not a name for this cavity uh, with, contained within the joint capsule. Okay, so this cavity that's within the joint capsule, this instead is known as the articular cavity. So this is called the articular cavity. Okay, and it's full of uh, synovial fluid. Shouldn't put equal. Uh, it's full of synovial fluid. And the synovial fluid is produced by the synovium. It's produced by the synovial membrane and secreted into the articular cavity. And the purpose of this synovial fluid is that it's going to lubricate the joint surfaces, basically, and help them to move uh, over one another smoothly if, if there is going to be movement in this joint. Okay, so I'll complete the joint capsule on this side too. Okay, so again, it consists of these two layers, the synovial membrane and then the outer layer uh, of uh, the joint capsule, which I'll highlight now in blue here. Okay, uh, this is basically a fibrous layer. Okay, and this is the tough layer. So the synovial membrane is often described as being paper thin. Okay, so it's not a very strong layer. It's physiologically important because it has an important job, which is to create the synovial fluid, uh, but it's not very protective. So uh, really the thing that holds the whole uh, joint capsule together is this outer layer, which is the fibrous layer, which is in blue here. Okay, and together, the inner synovial membrane with the outer fibrous layer, together those make up what's known as the joint capsule. Okay, so the joint capsule consists of this synovial membrane which is on the inside and is secreting the synovial fluid, and on the outside it consists of this fibrous layer which is made of very dense connective tissue and is holding the whole joint together and uh, protecting it from damage. Okay, so this is the structure of a synovial uh, joint here. Right, uh, so now let's have a look uh, in a bit more detail at the structure of the synovial membrane. So let's have a look at this synovium in more detail because this is where the inflammation in rheumatoid arthritis is going to occur. You're going to get an acute inflammatory response uh, which is going to end up being chronic. It's not never going to end really. It's just going to go on and on and on. But you're going to get that occurring in the uh, synovial membrane. Okay, so let's have a look at the structure of the synovial membrane. So the synovial membrane consists of two layers. Okay, so if this now represents the entire synovial membrane. So this was previously just shown as this orange uh, layer here. So this is the whole thing here. From the tip, from the inner portion to the outer portion. So this is the portion which faces uh, the articular cavity and this is the portion which faces the fibrous layer beneath. Okay, so we can divide the um, synovial membrane into two portions. This portion that faces the articular cavity is called the intima, okay, or it's also called the lining layer. So the intima or lining layer. And then at the layer below the intima down here, this is also, well, this is called the subintima, and again it has another name, it's also called the sublining layer. Okay, so the subintima or the sublining layer, those are both names for this uh, larger portion that is below the intima. Okay, so what is contained within uh, both the intima and subintima? Well, presumably the intima must contain uh, the cells which are actually going to create the synovial fluid, uh, and the uh, subintima must just contain, you know, some support tissue for the intima. Okay, and that's really what um, the distinction between these two is. So let's start with the intima, because this is the one which is actually going to create the synovial uh, fluid. Okay, so you have two uh, important cell types here, which actually face into uh, the articular cavity. Okay, so I'm drawing one here. Okay, and this is what's known as a type B intima cell, or a type B synoviocyte or a fibroblast-like synoviocyte, so it has a lot of different names. So this is called a type B intima cell. Okay, another word for intima cell is our synoviocyte, synovio 
site. Okay, so you could also call this a type B synoviocyte. Okay, and um, 